Hi, this is Eric with BC Gurus, and this is part nine of Web Forms. And this video is the last one in the series, and it covers workflow notifications. So, if you're not familiar with what workflows are, they're basically a process you can set up to notify you when users uh, submit forms. They can be used for some other things as well, but for uh, since this is a web forms video, that's what we're going to be covering here. And uh, just as it says on the slide, they send notifications to admin users. Uh, they can include the form details so that you can see the actual form submission data right in your email box. Uh, you can remove that if you don't want it. And uh, you can get pretty creative with how you uh, do email routing so that they get delivered to the right person. And uh, kind of the workflow here is someone submits a form and that will kick off the workflow that's been assigned to that form. And then the users uh, that are part of the role that have been set up on the workflow will be notified and then finally there's a way to uh, specify additional email addresses to get notified as well. Primarily these workflows get sent to admin users so they have to be set up as an actual user in the uh, system, uh, an admin user, uh, but you can send to other additional email addresses even if they aren't users it just requires an additional step to set up. Uh, so the basic uh, workflow setup process that we go through is to create a separate role for each uh, workflow and a separate workflow for each form. And uh, we're just showing you here a basic overview of what that looks like. And uh, we'll cover this uh, when we get to the demo, which we'll do right now. And then we'll end up uh, talking about some workflow tips and tricks. So the first step in this process is to create a role and uh, roles are used for a lot of things in Business Catalyst such as managing uh, permissions and things like that but they're also uh, used to uh, in the workflow process uh, basically grouping users together so we're going to define a new role for each web form so you just click on the uh, role button here and uh, you can just give this a name we generally call it something like test web form and then role and uh, the idea there is that it should match the name of the form so it's explicit and uh, very clear what that work or what this role is being used for. And then uh, you can just click next and it's going to take you to the user screen and over here it's going to show you a list of all the different admin users on the site and you're just going to want to uh, move those users to the sorry that was on the left and then you're going to move those users to the right and that will assign that user to the role. And you can also do this from the admin user screen. Uh, just go click on edit and you can assign a user to a specific role by uh, typing it in here. Uh, that's just a different way to accomplish the same task but the idea is you create the role and then assign the users to that role and then since this is just a role we're using for a workflow we don't really need to worry about permissions we can just kind of uh, leave that to the default here. Uh, the next thing we need to do after creating a role and assigning a user to it is to navigate over to the workflow section and this is where we create the workflow itself. So these are the two workflows you get when you create a, a basic business catalyst site. Uh, you can use these if you want, but we generally like to create a uh, workflow for each form specifically. So that's what we're going to do here. And again, we just follow a similar naming convention, test web form uh, workflow. And if this is going to be the workflow that uh, corresponds with your online shop or the e-commerce system, you'll need to check this orders box. Uh, there can only be one workflow assigned to that. Uh, but this is just going to be a basic form, so we don't need to uh, worry about that. We'll just click Save, and uh, then we're going to need to proceed to step two, which is creating workflow steps. Now, over on the left-hand side is a list of all the steps you've created, and workflows can have uh, several different steps depending on how complicated you want to make them. But for a basic email workflow, all we have to do is create a single step to email the correct people. So we've got to give it a name and it doesn't really matter, but we'll call it email role because that's describing what the step does is it emails the role assigned. And then you're going to come down here to role responsible and choose the role that you created in the last part. So we're going to do the test web form role. And simply by doing that and clicking saving step, you can see it created the step over here. 
And uh, by doing that, we can assign this workflow for a specific form, which I'll show you in a second, and it will email all the users that were in that particular role. Now, I said before, if you want to send email notifications to people who are not admin users on your site, you can do that from here as well. Just click on the step so it loads it up in here and uh, click this checkbox and uh, that's going to bring up this enter email addresses box so we can enter additional email addresses as well and uh, if you want to add more than one just put a semicolon and then add the next one that you would like to include and then you just have to save the step now you can optionally send the email workflow notification to the customer who fills the form out we generally don't use that option though so that will save the uh, the role and or save the workflow step and you can see if you click it it'll load back up and those settings will be saved so the last part that you need to do is actually assign this workflow to the form itself so we can bring back up our test web form that we've been working with so far and we can go to edit properties and from here we had originally left it on don't use a workflow uh, but now we can come down and select the workflow that we uh, want to use for this form and just click save now you can also set that setting when you first create the form if you've already got a workflow created but that's kind of up to you so that uh, that's pretty much it let's uh, jump back over to the slides and talk a little bit about that so workflow tips uh, again just use a different workflow and a different role for each form that just leaves things open to being flexible and uh, very clear uh, don't use the administrator's role when you're creating the workflow steps if you do that uh, because you're an admin on the site and you're building the site for your customers uh, all of your customers forms uh, you're going to get a notification for each one of those that's going to get annoying for you and uh, you just don't want to do that so uh, you have some other options uh, you don't have to just send to a specific email address uh, you can get creative with your email system and create lists. So, for instance, uh, we use Google Apps for our uh, company's uh, email system, and Google Apps allows us to create lists, and uh, those lists get assigned an email address. So you can just simply send an email uh, to that list address, and it will forward on to all the people that's part of that list. Uh, the BC email platform, the one that's built into Business Catalyst, also allows you to do uh, that type of thing so you can uh, do that as well and then uh, just for uh, management's sake you might want to consider using email addresses that don't belong to specific people uh, those people may or may not uh, be with you in the future and uh, you may want to uh, uh, to be able to manage that so you might want to consider creating an alias or a uh, list such as sales or support and uh, using those instead of individual people's email addresses that way uh, you don't have to be uh, locked in you can uh, you can just simply reassign those aliases or change who's on the list and you don't have to worry about coming back to your site and uh, making those updates but that's really up to you so that uh, that covers workflows